All right, so it's right at 7.05. We're going to go um, go ahead and get started. Um, just thank you all for joining again. I'm Rachel Brown. Um, I work under Brent, and I'm a program assistant. So um, he has another meeting right now, or else he would be on this phone call. Um, but thank you all for joining, um, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jordan Daigle, um, and he's going to tell you about his background starting off. Yeah, so um, first off, thanks everybody for uh, tuning in, and this is a neat experience to get to do with everybody during these times, and um, trying a new avenue of showing, and um, awesome thing that Brent and them guys are putting together here. Um, like Rachel said, my name is Jordan Daigle. Um, I hail from a little town called Limestone, Tennessee, which is up near Johnson City, um, East Tennessee, about 30 minutes from the North Carolina state line, uh, grew up in agriculture um, from the time I was about 13, 14, got involved in 4-H, uh, actually grew up in eastern North Carolina in Greenville and uh, started out showing goats. Um, one thing led to another and uh, by the time I graduated, started going out and uh, managed a couple different show goat operations across the country and then uh, started getting into livestock photography, uh, grooming for a living, and went out, moved out to Texas for about five years, uh, making a living, doing sale promotional pictures, um, all kinds of different stuff photography-wise, did some show photography. Uh, fitting was definitely probably my, uh, one of my main sources of income for a long time. So um, have been heavily involved in it, have gotten – um, see a lot of things happen in the livestock industry that have been really cool to see and uh, excited to be here with you guys today. Rachel, you're muted. Now I can hear you. Okay. No, Sorry. So, um, jumping right into it, we want to, um, for our virtual show, we can, we're asking for pictures for our a front view of the animal, a profile, and a rear view of the animal, and not on a stand is really our um, only thing that we're asking for. So, can you go ahead and walk through um, just some of your top recommendations that you would have for our exhibitors for the upcoming show? Sure thing. So um, there's several different options um, you could probably do uh, in terms of your pictures. Uh, you can obviously use your cell phone, uh, camera phone, whatever. I know um, I was talking to Brand earlier. I was telling him, you know, my wife, she's got one of the new iPhones and um, I use an iPhone as well. And um, can everybody hear me? Okay, here, Jordan. just making sure everybody could hear. Okay, so um, back to the cell phone. So, I mean, heck, they, they've made the camera phones so good these days that you can take a pretty darn good picture with, with one of them. Um, if you're going to use a, a professional camera or just kind of maybe a some kind of digital camera um, that you get at Walmart or Best Buy or whatever you may be using, um, that works great. We'll cover a little bit of both. The first thing I wanted to talk about a little bit is kind of basically um, maybe some different angles. You know, we talked about doing a front end shot, um, a rear end shot, and then a profile. Um, key important thing with those is um, I usually like to start out doing my profile shot. And basically, you just want to have that animal set up square. Um, uh, Rachel's got some pictures for us, I think, if she can pull them up. Um, of a couple examples. So here, like on a goat, is a good example. On, a, on your profile, which would be the one to the right, um, you see how you can basically, you can still see all four feet and legs on that goat. Um, but he's still, you know, it's still a good profile shot. I'm angled just slightly to the rear of him, so you can see a little bit of muscle shape um, in that lower one-third on that goat. 
Um, so feet and leg placement is real important. As you can see in this picture, I kind of like to be able to see all, all four feet. Um, and you can basically do that by just adjusting your feet and legs. Basically, you just want a silhouette of, of that offside leg in that picture. Um, and, you know, you can be slightly angled um, to the left, maybe just a little bit if you're trying to kind of get a little more silhouette of that rear one third of that animal um, just to help show a little bit more dimension from a side profile. Um, another thing is I know when I'm shooting pictures, um, whether you're shooting with a, a DSLR camera or you're shooting with a cell phone, um, getting down a little bit lower to take them pictures. I mean, you don't have to be all the way to the ground, but if you're kind of squatted down, that just kind of um, shows a little bit more size and balance. You know, if you're, if you're standing up over the top of that goat or that sheep or whatever you may be showing, um, that's going to kind of dwarf that animal and not really give it a fair shot um, on its true size. Um, so, you know, get down a little bit lower for your shots. Um, that'll help just him look like he's got a little bit more size and, and also, you know, keeping all your feet and legs the way you want it. And you can see in that picture to the left, um, on that rear end picture, a thing I like to do with those is um, that's real important to me is getting up high. If you can kind of get up high and get over the top of that animal, the guy that's going to be sorting these on this virtual show, um, which is really, really neat, um, when he's going to be sorting these to give him the best vantage point to see how much shape and definition that thing has down its top and through his, his rear end, um, he's going to see that best from kind of a high angle view. Um, you can take a lower angle view if you want, um, but my personal preference, I kind of like to get up high up over them so you can see how much width they've got down their top and, and out over their hip. Um, some you can get directly straight in behind them or like in this picture i'm kind of off it maybe just a slight angle um all four feet on the ground ideally um as i've seen somebody was asking um, um that definitely helps for sure let's let's keep all four feet on the ground for sure um if you've got a picture of our front end view We'll cover that real quick and all right, so here we've pulled up a, a front end shot of this goat. Um, big thing on doing the front end shots on these goats, kind of depending on how they're built. Um, I like to kind of have a front three-quarter view of them. Ideally, that way you can still see um, some length of body, some hip shape in them. Um, and also, you can kind of see their neck a little bit more. Now, I know some folks like just a straight-on front-end shot of them. Um, and if that's your cup of tea, by all means, I, in my opinion, if you kind of shoot them at sort of this angle, you could probably get out in front of them a little bit more. I think that just shows a little bit more neck extension um, through that animal, uh, how long neck they are, how good fronted they are, um, while carrying that out from behind their shoulders and out into their hip and seeing how stout they are. Um, it all depends and you know your project you got to know their their strengths and weaknesses and I think that's the big thing I've learned as a livestock photographer um, is you don't picture every single piece of stock the exact same way. Um, there's some that maybe just get a little bit easier behind their shoulders and if you shoot them from this angle that might not be his best look. So we, we're going to, you know, you're going to be, they're not going to be any denying that in a profile shot by any means. But, you know, if it's going to hurt him more shooting a front end angle shot on one that gets a little easy behind his shoulders, might not be a bad idea to come out in front of him a little bit more just to give him the best shot he's got um, in terms of the pictures that you're going to be turning in. So um, with all that said, and we've got a couple sheep pictures as well. Um, right here, just I, I didn't have a, a front end shot pulled up for you guys. I'm sorry about that, but uh, this is just a profile and a rear end shot of these sheep. 
Um, and basically same concept. You can see we're up high on that rear end shot. You can see up over his top, um, see how much extension he's got in his neck. And uh, one thing I'd challenge you guys to remember too, when we've got these things on the brace, um, granted, we want to keep all four feet on the ground by all means, but sometimes when you're trying to get that money shot, sometimes you just want to stretch that neck just a little bit more. Um, still keeping all four feet on the ground for sure. But um, just to kind of help stretch that neck and just give them as much extension as we possibly can um, to give them the best look and, and, and everything from a rear and a profile and a front end um, like we're wanting. Um, same thing on the profile on this sheep. Just you can barely see the silhouette of his offside legs uh, front and back. Um, you want them evenly spaced. You don't want their legs all every which way. And, uh, you know, make sure, you know, just like in showmanship or showing at a real show, you know, we don't want to get them too stretched out, um, but we don't want them bunched up underneath each other. So, you know, do your homework. And the nice thing about this is being able to turn pictures in and stuff like that is that, you know, you can kind of take several pictures of them, maybe stretched out a little more, not quite so much and see what you think looks best before you turn them in. So um, definitely do that. Take your time, be patient with the animals um, and, uh, and go from there. So uh, I'm, I'm probably talking out of order here. I think I was supposed to go over some more stuff on the cameras um, and we'll run over that real quick. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about some times a day, where to take pictures and stuff like that. But um, back to kinds of cameras you can use. Um, I, I use a pretty high dollar camera. Um, that's, that's what I made my living at doing for a long time. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, like I said, guys, you know, if you've got a good cell phone that takes really good pictures, um, that's the important thing. Just w whatever works for you. If you have a digital camera that you're wanting to use, whether it be a really expensive one or maybe just a, a, a lower grade one that you like to just take pictures around the farm with, whatever you may be using. Um, I personally like to shoot in manual mode and I, and I don't know if, if everybody does or not. Um, if I'm shooting in manual mode, uh, there will be a setting on there that says M, should be on the left side of your camera, and uh, whether you're shooting an icon or a Canon or whatever. And uh, the way I'll adjust those things, if this helps anybody, is when you're shooting in manual mode, there will be a setting for your f-stop, which is your aperture. That's what blurs the background um, a little bit more. The lower your f-stop is, like a Mine goes down, depending on what kind of lens you have, mine goes down to a 2.8. Some just go down to a 4.0. The lower you have that f-stop, the more blurred the background is going to be. And what that also does is adjust how much light you have coming in and out of that lens. Um, another factor in that is your ISO. Typically, your ISO sitting on your camera, if I'm shooting outside on a sunny day, it's never above 100. Um, the highest I'll ever go on an ISO on maybe a really dark cloudy day and the weather's just not wanting to cooperate, but we've still got to roll pictures. Um, I may bump it up to 200. But typically you don't want to get too high on that. It kind of hurts some of the quality, um, on that image, especially if we're shooting outside, um, inside's a little bit different story, but shooting outside, ideally, um, that's kind of where you want to keep it. And then your shutter speed in your manual mode. Um, is primarily what what I use the most. Typically, I always have my f-stop set at 3.2, 3.5, my ISO at 100, and then I control my lighting with my shutter speed. So what your shutter speed does is the lower your shutter speed number, so like 1 over 100, that's going to let more light in. The faster your shutter speed the less light it lets in. So if you're picturing on a really sunny day, and I'm pretty sure I said all that right, I could be wrong, but if you're picturing on a sunny day, um, you're typically gonna want your number to be higher because it's brighter outside, so you're not trying to let in too much light. If you're letting in too much light, that's gonna kind of wash out your pictures. Um, if it's a darker day, you'll typically have that number lower on your shutter speed. 
Um, and what that's doing, it's, it's going to allow more light to come in. So if it's kind of dark outside, let's more light come in so you can see that animal um, to the best you can um, before you get them images downloaded. So um, with that said, do we got any questions before we move into times of day, where to picture, stuff like that? Rachel, anybody? Um, I haven't seen any questions so far. Good deal. All right. Well, I have a question. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Um, so you were saying that on an, on a phone there's an ISO setting. Is there an f-stop and a shutter speed on a phone, or is that only on, like, a professional camera, like what you just, have? Just on, like, a digital camera. There will be. I'm on not, a digital. Okay. I think – on the new iPhone, there's some kind of an f-stop setting in there, I think. Okay. Maybe, or a shutter speed or something. I'm not 100% sure because I haven't messed around with one. But typically, okay. all those settings are going to be on a digital camera. Um, on your phone, it's mostly all going to be automatic. So all okay. you got to do is pretty well point and shoot uh, for the most part. Mm -hmm. so. Good. That's great. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You bet. So um, if we don't have any other questions right now, we're going to jump into uh, kind of something else that ties in with all this. And basically, along with the angles we're trying to shoot of these goats and sheep and, and whatever your project may be, um, you, really important thing is time of day and where you're taking your pictures. Um, now, one thing I believe that we're they're talking about, they're wanting to do is uh, to not use stand pictures. So the pictures um, that we posted up for you here, the sheep and the goat, um, ideally is how you're going to want to be showing them. Braced up. Um, I, I'm pretty sure these are going to be uh, market. So you're going to want to brace those things up, whether it be up on a hay bale or out in the yard or whatever. Um, I would encourage you, if you have the ability and the setup to take your pictures outside. Um, if you're taking pictures in the barn, unless you got really good light and cool green grass mat, a nice backdrop, typically those pictures just aren't going to jump out and stand out and look as good. Um, it's not going to enhance the great features of the animal. Your lighting is going to be a little bit harder in there, especially like if you're shooting with a cell phone where maybe you can't control as much of that as you could. Um, so I would challenge you to take the your project, whatever it may be, um, outside if you can. Couple different things to remember. On goats, typically you want to picture them either earlier in the morning or later in the evening. They're white animals with red heads. So if we're picturing them in the middle of the day, you're going to run into more chances of being kind of washed out. You're going to have belly shadows on them. Um, which here again just doesn't look as good it, as you can see in the goat pictures we've got pulled up right now um, really don't have any shadows on them we pictured those early morning time and it just kind of depends on how your place is set up um, but ideally you want to as free of a background as you have so if you've got a a nice pretty fence row or some trees in the background with some nice green grass or something like that. That's most ideal. And I understand um, everybody's not set up that way. And, and we've been wet all winter and we're coming out and have a lot of mud and stuff like that. So, um, but best case scenario, you know, find the best background you can. And uh, whenever you're taking these pictures, you're going to want the sun at your back. So typically, like I said, on the goats, we're going to picture morning um, this time of year, probably anywhere from eight o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock afternoon. You're probably good to picture from four o'clock in the afternoon, maybe to five thirty, six, getting a little late. So anywhere kind of in there um, would be good. Always have the sun at your back. So when you're trying to pick out a picture spot, figure out where the sun's at what time of day am i looking at my picture spot you know you may be looking at a nice row of trees in the background is is some place you want a picture and your sun isn't good in the evening so maybe check it in the morning see how your sun's going to hit there and uh and kind of go from there now when we're doing sheep 
Um, they're a little bit darker colored. I think uh, they can be a little more forgiving in terms of what kind, what time of day you're picturing. Um, you know, if they're real white colored, you know, obviously uh, softer light, morning, evening be good. You could probably picture them a little bit later in the morning or even earlier in the afternoon. Um, and cattle, um, if you're picturing black calves, uh, I would definitely not shoot early, early morning um, just because if, in my experience, and I've not done as, as many cattle pictures as a lot of guys do out there for a living, um, they could probably tell you different. But I know from my experience, um, I like the light a little bit later in the day, not high noon by any means, um, but a little bit later in the day, in the morning, and maybe a little earlier in the afternoon, um, just because they are darker colored. So I think they just kind of pop and stand out a little bit more if you kind of picture them maybe early mid afternoon you get kind of late in the day and i think it's a little bit harder to see them and the colors are almost a little too soft um but that's just my opinion um but for sure just keep an eye on those things and uh when you're taking your pictures um i'd also suggest um wearing the proper attire you know this is a show um I know ideally you'd probably like to be out in, in shorts and Crocs or whatever you like to wear down to the barn. But um, it, in my opinion, it, you know, this being a show, I'd suggest, you know, having a nice pair of leather shoes on, whether it's a pair of Sperry's or Twisted X's or some cowboy boots. Um, and, uh, and then a nice pair of blue jeans, button up shirt. You know, we're, we're doing brace pictures depending on how much of the person you're getting in the picture. You may not even see a t-shirt, but if you're, you're gonna be visible in the picture, have your nice button up shirt on uh, just to look real presentable and, and professional. Um, seen somebody asking here about picture and pigs. Um, same thing, darker colored pigs. I'd, I'd probably do them about like the cattle, maybe a little bit earlier in the day. Like I said, High noon is never a good time to picture anything just because that sun's straight up above you. You're going to get a belly shadow on about whatever you're trying to picture unless you're, you got an overcast day. Um, but as long as we got sun outside, probably, you know, cattle and darker colored pigs, you know, probably 2.30 to 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon would be just fine um, on any of them. Um, talked a little bit about a tire. Let's see. Um, Fitting, I guess, before we jump into that, do we have any other questions about anything else before we go into the option of fitting, I guess? Just your opinion maybe on um, wearing logos or anything on your clothing, hat, shirt, like a fall brand or anything? I, I personally don't see a problem with that. I guess it'd be kind of whatever you're used to doing at a – at a county show or, or a, a district show, whatever. Uh, Rachel might, do, do y'all got any opinions on that per se with you guys? Um, I personally do not, um, but that is a great question we can ask Brent and when we upload the video, um, if there's any discouragement against it, we can, um, we'll put it in on the website. For sure. So, um, we had a quick question about what kind of shots need to be taken for pigs. Um, pigs is one for me that I haven't done a whole lot of work with. Um, in my opinion, from a lot of pig photographers I do know very well um, that do them all the time, we've had plenty of talks about them. Um, I, I'd say same kind of same kind of a deal. Um, you know, you want your your profile pictures. You want them a, a little bit offset you want them kind of pictured a little bit more like a heifer i'd say um kind of front legs just barely offset in the front kind of like in our goat pictures and then maybe have them a little bit offset in the back um so if that helps at all but pig pigs are definitely that's uh that's one i haven't had the privilege of diving into yet so i wouldn't be the most expert opinion on shooting pigs um do we got any other questions i do have another question um so usually and i was wondering if in addition to the shots of the profile and 
all of those still shots if um, somebody would usually provide um, something with the animal walking so that the judge can see their stride. Sure. Rachel, how are they, are they going to have any kind of a video or anything like that for these? Or is it <clears throat> on pictures? How are they working that? At the moment, we're only going to be going off of pictures. Um, if we have talked about it, if we feel the need that we want to do a video, um, when we break the classes, um, we can sort those out um, and ask for videos then. Um, we'll, we're taking everything one step at a time. So for right now, we're only doing um, our standstill shots that we have. And in talking to the judges, they seem to think that um, that's going to be the best way to go for us, um, just because we're on a smaller scale. Um, and uh, this is the first ever one that we're doing. So uh, we'll, okay. for right now, we're only doing pictures is my, my answer on that one. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So um, we got a question about taking shots and if they need to get someone else to take them or um, if he can take them and have somebody else set up the animal. As far as I know, um, it, it doesn't matter as, as long as it's just a picture of the, of the animal. Um, whoever is going to be setting it up, um, I'd say for sure um, you want to be dressed, you know, appropriately and professionally. Um, Rachel, is there anything in particular that you know of in terms of the rules on that? That's a good question. I'm going to look, look at that and I will get back to you, Josh. Okay. That, that's a good question. I didn't think about that, but I mean, I, I guess that's a, that's a fair question for sure. So any other questions before we move on here? All right, so um, I'm just going to cover a little bit on fitting. Um, I think the option's been given on these to fit um, for this show in particular. Um, I'd say that's going to go back to as well. Um, and one thing we had talked about earlier was for this show, um, I think everybody's going to be able to. If they continue to do these um, virtual reality shows, which I think is really neat, um, just like any other show, you know, check your rules, double check and make sure that you can um, um, and find all that out before you do. Um, I highly encourage it, in my opinion, that they ought to, you ought to be able to at uh, any show just because I think it, it helps show how hard that kid's worked with that animal, that, that daily hair care and, and all that, and that they've got that animal presented to the absolute best of its ability. Um, if we're going to fit these things, basically just keep in mind the same stuff you do on anything else, you know, um, on the sheep, typically we're, we're blending in legs and, and carting them out, um, cattle and the goats, um, we're going to fit legs on those things. Um, I'd say probably most of the weathers y'all are going to be showing slick sheared. Um, so, you know, just fitting up to the knees. Um, but I would definitely recommend fitting if you can, for sure, just cause, um, I think that just makes them a little, a, a lot more higher presented, um, as a whole and just shows that you put a little extra effort and, uh, time it, into your projects at home. Um, so any questions about that by any means? I do not have any photos of cattle that I turned in. Um, that was one of the questions. Um, but uh, if anybody needs some, I guess when they post this video, I could definitely send some in that they could upload that you could look at to give kind of an idea of uh, some good different angles to post on those for sure. All right, so somebody on here was saying that their show is requiring a video. Um, and I'd be happy to talk about that here for just a minute. Um, so 
basically you could do a couple different things. Um, what I would suggest on like the sheep and the goats is start out with that goat br or sheep braced up. Um, what I like to do is start out from behind and then just basically pan over to the side. I kind of like to keep my phone lower like I talked about doing with the pictures. Um, if you're using a cell phone, kind of keep your, you know, start up high over the top and the rear end of that sheep and goat, just like we talked about originally, and then kind of pan down a little bit lower and over to your profile, have whoever's showing it stand off of them so you can see their front end. And then what I do, as soon as they come off of them and you've got that front end shot, which should only take a couple of seconds, have them lead that animal. Um, and basically like stand off of them to where you can see their front end when they start walking and then basically just pan with the animal as they go come in front of you. So you can kind of see them walking from the front, the side, and then away from you all in one big shot. Um, if that helps. We have any other questions? Just uh, one more thing on our list is what are some discouragements? What are your top like, oh my goodness, please don't do that. Okay, so on the discouragements, um, one for sure, big pet peeve of mine um, is picturing with shadow cover in the animal. Um, if you're picturing into the sun for one you're not going to be able to see that animal very well at all it's going to be a black shadow across the whole thing um, you're not going to be able to see any details about that animal um, and your background's going to be completely washed out and you're not going to be able to see it because the sun's blaring into your camera um, so that would be for sure a big pet peeve of mine um, also just making sure that your gut, your animal's feet feet and legs are set up properly um, it, Man, you can change one so much in terms of how you have them set up. You can go from them looking not so great to like an absolute million dollars just by how you've got them set up, how, having them stretched, you know, not too much but far enough, um, not having them bunched up, having their neck kind of pulled up and showing off how much extension they've got, uh, making sure they're square. Um, like I said, you know, when I'm shooting from a profile, I really like to see all four legs. I think it's just important to have that silhouette. Um, if you don't, I think they lose a lot of dimension and they get way too dimensional um, or too two dimensional, I guess you could say. But um, when, when you can just see two legs on their show side and nothing else. Um, so I really like to just, when I'm doing like a profile shot or whatever, to be just slightly off maybe to the left if you're picturing show side or whatever, be able to see all four legs and kind of the silhouette of um, that rear third of them, just so you can see a little bit of expression and, and muscle into them and also like when you're shooting at that angle too kind of with their shoulders slightly away from you makes them look a lot better shouldered if you're if you're picturing kind of at a profile but their shoulders kind of too far into you almost it can make them look real rough shouldered and not not smooth and, and transitioning into their shoulder like they need to so kind of have one thing I learned doing a show photography sitting and helping them guys at the backdrop and doing backdrop pictures is all they'll constantly say is shoulder away shoulder away shoulder away shoulder towards the backdrop because when you get that shoulder too far out it just makes them look a lot rougher um so kind of keep that shoulder not at an extreme but just a little bit kind of toward away from the cameraman just to make them look like they transition or a little bit smoother um Somebody asked what type of lens I shoot with. So on my camera, I'm shooting a 5D Mark III um, with a 70 to two, a Canon 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8 lens um, IS2, which is your Im image stabilizer. Um, pretty expensive lens, but uh, they do incredible jobs. I mean, all the pictures um, that uh, Rachel's got posted up for us or ones I've shot with that lens. So, any other questions?
Awesome. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't look like any other questions have come through the chat. Um, so we'll wrap up just a huge thank you for um, everyone that logged on. Um, Jordan, thanks for taking the time um, and sharing your knowledge, um, tips and tricks to shooting livestock. Um, is there a Facebook page for your photography um, or any way to follow along um, with um, your business? I had a uh, Winter's Edge Fitting and Photography Facebook page. Um, I've been terrible at keeping up with that. The best way to get a hold of me is just on my personal Facebook, uh, Jordan Nagel. And uh, I've also got Instagram. Um, so either one of them ways is probably just best way to get a hold of me. Uh, get at me through messenger whatever it may be um but yeah if y'all have any kind of questions or any tips you need answers to or whatever um feel more than free to reach out and contact me i'd be happy to help anybody at any time so thank you um and just a reminder our video um we'll get it posted tomorrow um and so thank you all for everyone signing on um and i'm gonna go ahead and end the meeting thank you guys Are you ended?